corruption. It's a dirty word and an issue that's been plaguing mankind for a couple of centuries. Hi, I'm Kathy Tussler with the Chemical Heritage Foundation, and this is One in a Trillion. It's all about how man has been trying to identify and clean up the pollutants in our air and water. The air we breathe can also be a hazardous experience. Fresh air is essential to both animals and humans. Not so long ago in a rural Louisiana community, the residents could see all kinds of things spewing from the smokestacks of a local factory. The community was certain their air was being contaminated because they were experiencing high rates of asthma, cancer, and other respiratory problems. But every time the EPA tested, the factory altered its production to influence the results. So the EPA couldn't prove that they were doing anything wrong. Then an organization developed these buckets that you see here in this picture. They are essentially home air testing kits. Every time residents saw the pollution coming from the factory, residents went out and took samples, sealed the buckets up, and sent them off to an independent lab for testing. Ultimately, the factory was fined and properly regulated by the EPA. The problem of water pollution has been around for a long time, as can be seen in this cartoon, Faraday giving his card to Father Thames. It's a spoof of a letter that Faraday sent to the Times of London complaining about the smell of the river. The big stink was caused by the deposit of human waste directly into the river. In the 1700s, the yellow fever epidemic was wiping out whole towns. When people realized that the source of the germs and disease was coming from their polluted water, clean water suddenly became a priority. The problem with clean water is still an issue today. You'll see in our exhibit two on-site water testing kits that allow people to check the water in their local streams and rivers. This particular kit was used in a water education course. Lead poisoning has been a problem for a long time. It's particularly bad for children under the age of six because it can severely affect their physical and mental development, and in some cases can even be fatal. The problem with lead poisoning is that there are very few initial symptoms and it's difficult to detect. But then in 1963, along came this device. It's an atomic absorption spectrophotometer. The spectrophotometer uses light to measure quantities of toxins in the blood, and the results are much faster. So now physicians can treat their young patients much sooner and with better results. Curiously, it wasn't until 1978 that the Consumer Product Safety Commission finally banned lead in a lot of manufactured products. Well, these are just a couple of the items you'll see in our one in a trillion case. I hope you'll come in someday to see them at the museum or get on our website at chemheritage.org. For the Chemical Heritage Foundation, I'm Kathy Tussler.